Hello and welcome back to another Vidorama, where we celebrate the VHS releases of the past in graphic detail. My name is Arvon Jones and today we celebrate the 30th anniversary of Gremlins 2 The New Batch, released in 1990. Now usually when I start these videos I like to feature the VHS in question, and Stephen over at Lonely Tree Entertainment's YouTube channel very kindly offered to donate Gremlins 2 for this very video. However, due to circumstances beyond our control, the tape hasn't arrived yet. But I have been assured it's on its way. Hello, I'm Steve Monkey Mason. Right, I'm getting a bit of grief, right, okay? And it, it's not that bad, it's not like the phone's ringing, you have seven days, that kind of stuff. Mr. Jones, who I met at Horicon a few years ago, awesome dude, amazing artist. I had mentioned in one of my videos that I got two copies of the big box VHS of the Gremlins, which I love the artwork of that. That's a Warner Bros. big box original. Um, the tip there so I said he could have one just out of general you know like yeah yeah you can have one and he's like oh that'll be awesome and he's like do you want anything for us he's like no 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 you know last starfighter and all that kind of jazz like you can have it I forgot to send it didn't I there's a lot of stuff going on and I'm like right okay I'll get it sent and I was like hmm social distance and don't leave the house without it so I'm gonna go right I want to post it now the only uh, packaging I've got is some proper grim brown packet tape and I've got some bubble wrap so yeah yeah so you know I'm prepared I'm prepared um but yeah I, I have no idea what's going to happen with this so this is the video for Mr. Afron Jones I always say his name wrong so I call him Mr. Jones you know so yeah Gremlins 2 and I'll be back in the outtakes and I'll show you some of the Gremlins collection but again I've just realised that you know we have to get out there and we have to get the scent and start this video Brilliant. So yeah, um, I might have to do it by courier, by hands, because since the course office is shut, and this, you know, if I put it in there, is it going to get collected? What times? I'm not feeding you. I don't care. Like, right, okay, hopefully it's gone to plan, right? Complete the post office is shut. So this is Arcadia. Um, I throw some outtakes and show off the collection later on. Uh, you can see a lot of this on Lonely Tree um, Entertainment channel. Um, I've I've had to do something that I didn't want to do. I seriously didn't. Like I've had to I've had to hear me use the package that from Jones. Like I'm sorry. Like literally, I have no idea when it's going to turn up. Like they've picked it up. I mean, I don't know if you check out the channel again. I don't just talk about like I mean I do direct music videos and stuff. I don't just crack crazy loads of stuff and just go oh look at that oh look at this look at that. I don't want to pick anything up in case I drop it. So they've got the parcel, it's sent, I mean it's not like you can just walk to the shop and pick up another copy of Gremlins 2 on VHS, soundtrack's quite handy actually, but again I've done, I already filmed some bits and bobs prior to this jumping around, anything you really see I'm talking about normally has its own separate video on the channel, the big Gremlin up there, uh, you've got a little stripe collection going up there, although we've got an original Daffy up there, I do have the original um, book about it as well. Uh, the game's back there, hiding there. There's loads of Gremlins stuff up there. There's loads of stuff I did, a Gremlins tribute video at Christmas if you want to see my whole collection. As I said, it's Gremlins, Gremlins, Gremlins. It's all of my life, it's on my doors. So we've got Rambo, Gizmo, and this guy as well. But I want to say goodbye for now, randomly. Hopefully he's got his VHS, but yeah. Thanks for watching, goodbye. These things can't be helped, so we'll just have to carry on without it. Oh. This looks promising. Without further delay, let's celebrate the 30th anniversary of Gremlins 2 The New Batch. Okay, if this is your first time here, I will just explain that on this channel I paint tributes to movie rentals from the past. Having watched the movie and taken notes, I firstly draw a rough sketch and then once I'm happy with the sketch, 
it is then photocopied onto thin card for the painting stage. This stage. I use acrylic paint to mark the pens. Okay, now that we're up to speed, I will also add that the colours I'm using today are Mars Black, Titanium White and Light Green. I would just like to thank Stephen once again for donating Gremlins 2 to this project, nominating the movie. As he mentioned before, we met at Horrorcon back in 2017, and I've been an avid follower of his Lonely Tree Entertainment channel, link in the description, ever since. He's a great guy. His channel has videos ranging from music videos to movie reviews. Well worth your time, so be sure to check him out. So, Gremlins 2 The New Batch. Just in case you haven't seen it, the film follows on from the first movie, where Billy Peltzer and his girlfriend Kate have now moved to New York and are both working at the Clamp Center, which is a state-of-the-art high-rise building in Manhattan. Gizmo the Mogwai also finds himself at the Clamp Center, but in a research laboratory. Billy is able to rescue him, but when he's forced to leave Gizmo unattended, Gizmo gets wet, and we are introduced to four new Mogwai who turn on him. They eat after midnight, transforming into gremlins, and they too get wet, and the entire building is overrun with gremlins. Hijinks ensue as Billy and Kate try to stop the gremlins escaping into New York. But that's the simplified version. This movie is very different to the first. It's anarchic, it plays more like a live action cartoon at times. It has more jokes and references to other movies than your typical Joe Dante movie. Dante, who was reluctant to return to the franchise, did so on the understanding that he could take this movie in whatever direction he wanted, and he did just that. And I love it. I love the Gremlins. They represent a very special time for me. In fact, if I may reminisce a little, uh, the original Gremlins movie was released in 84 and I was only five then. And despite being too young to see the movie in the cinema, I was completely swept along with the hype. Uh, mostly TV spots and so on. And one day my mother bought me the read-along storybook with a cassette and it was read by the legendary former Doctor Tom Baker. I would sit there for hours with my Fisher-Price tape recorder listening to Tom, committing all those, quote, superb pictures from the film to memory. And this tied me over until we had a video player so I could watch the VHS. I was both fascinated and a little unnerved by the Gremlins, but they certainly do represent a simpler time for me. So we fast forward to 1990, I'm now 11 and this movie has just been released and once again I'm swept along with all the hype. There was a TV spot featuring a talking Gremlin and this just fascinated me. I had so many questions, but I didn't get to see it. Instead I made do with a Gremlins 2 The New Batch movie magazine that was produced by Marvel. Uh, bought for me by my grandmother and I flicked through that magazine so many times just perplexed and enthralled by the photographs of a vegetable gremlin, a bat gremlin, an electric gremlin and a girl gremlin and once again it was our local video rentals that came to the rescue and I was able to watch the movie and it just blew my mind. It had more gremlins in it, it had the before promised talking brainy gremlin it had a vegetable gremlin, it had a girl gremlin, it had Bugs Bunny in it, it had Daffy Duck in it, it had Christopher Lee in it. It even had a reference to Batman. It had mutants in it, it had mad scientists and many, many silly jokes and slapstick comedy. It was everything my little 11 year old brain craved. And I loved it. I watched it three times before accepting it had to go back and not incur a late fee. And then I promptly requested the video for my birthday, which came round, and I watched it many, 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 many more times. You see, dear viewer, and this might shock you, I didn't have many friends growing up, and so I spent most of my time indoors. But every time I watch this movie, I spot something new that I missed. The jokes and the references to other movies are just layered. Something you can always count on in a Joe Dante movie, but this one is just turned up to 11. I mentioned his reluctance to return to the franchise. Warner Brothers have been asking him to make a sequel since the release of the first film. But as he believed the first film had a satisfactory enough ending, he thought a second movie would just be viewed as a cash grab. The studio had tried various other writers and directors, pitching ideas, one of them would have the Gremlins taking over Las Vegas. 
but this went nowhere and so they offered it to Dante with full creative control over the movie and a budget that was three times what he had been given for the first film. The movie which not only parodies things that were popular at the time, such as cable television, it also satirises the very sequel format itself and breaks the fourth wall more times than I care to count. Greta Gremlin there, responsible for many a deviant art account. The original Gremlins were provided by the great Chris Wallace, who, when he was approached to return for the sequel, he was already committed to other projects, and so Dante turned to Rick Baker instead. I will skip the Rick Baker biography. I've already covered that in another painting. If you check out my Incredible Melting Man painting video, uh, you'll find out a lot more about his amazing career. But when Rick Baker was approached, he initially turned down the project. Uh, he had no interest in repeating someone else's design, instead preferring to design his own creatures. And so to get him on board, Dante introduced a backstory to the movie that involved a genetic laboratory and promised that he could create his own unique mutated gremlins. And that's just what he did, giving us these amazing creations. The Bat Gremlin, Electric Gremlin, Vegetable Gremlin, Brain Gremlin and Greta. Interestingly there was also going to be an Elephant Gremlin and a Rhino Gremlin intended but uh, they were dropped early on in production, presumably due to the logistics. But Rick Baker's Gremlin designs are just amazing. Painting this piece just reaffirmed my admiration for his talent and craftsmanship. Seeing the intricate and unique markings that each gremlin had, it was just perfect. Each one has a character to it, it's amazing. Fun fact, the movie that Grandpa Fred mentions called Attack of the Octopus People was in fact Octoman from 1971 in which Rick Baker had created the creature suit for. Joe Dante included it in the film as a nod to Baker's previous work. And here we have George whose appearance was based on the actor Edward G. Robinson. Just in case you missed it, these two were called George and Lenny, a reference to Of Mice and Men, which was often parodied by the theatrical cartoons of the 1940s and 50s. So as a fan of both creature movies and vintage animation, you can understand why this pleased me. Being so young at the time of the release of the first movie, I had no real comprehension of directors and their work, but by the time Gremlins 2 had come around, I had a better understanding of such things and started to take an interest. And it was around this time that many of Joe Dante's movies had started to make their way onto terrestrial television here in the UK. Movies such as The Explorers, Inner Space and The Burp seemed to be regular features on television and if they weren't on I would spot his name in the credits of Erie, Indiana. In short, if I saw his name in the credits I knew it was something I was going to enjoy. By the time Matinee was released in 1993 I had also experienced his pre-Gremlin back catalogue and loved the Howling Piranha just as much and singled out his segments to be the best in the Twilight Zone movie. It's funny, as I was working on this I still couldn't settle on which Gremlin was my favourite. I loved Daffy, obviously based on Daffy Duck, but I also loved the Brain Gremlin who was voiced by Tony Randall, perhaps best remembered for acting alongside Jack Klugman in The Odd Couple. Now I'm working on Mohawk, uh, closely resembles Stripe from the first movie. He was voiced by the same man who voiced Stripe, uh, Frank Welker, the voice of everyone's childhood. Mohawk is perhaps the best example of what I was saying before about these amazing colourings and markings that these puppets had. If you've already seen the movie you will understand the significance of that bottle that he's holding and you will know exactly what comes next. As there is so much going on in this image I felt that we wouldn't see as much of the after effects and so I opted to instead suggest it with that bottle. One of 
when I first started drawing up this idea I had many ideas I had intended for it to be an image that charted the progression throughout the film it would start with Gizmo at the bottom getting wet then move upwards to the new Mogwai above them the cocoons then the gremlins and then them getting wet and so on but it became clear to me that if each gremlin was to feature prominently I would have to scale back my ideas somewhat but the basic concept is still there and I certainly wasn't going to leave these guys out. Sorry to keep going on about the markings on these creatures, but the Mogwai were certainly no exception. I love the variation of the fur that they used. In fact, if you are interested in such things, and there has to be someone out there, uh, check out the abandoned prototype Mogwai concept online. It's very interesting to see what they didn't actually use. I've mentioned how amazing the gremlins are in great length, but I haven't addressed the human cast yet. Many of which were in the first movie of course, such as Sack, Galligan, Phoebe Cates, Dick Miller and Jackie Joseph. K. Luke returned, as did Howie Mandel as the voice of Gizmo. Being a Joe Dante movie, of course it features many familiar faces from his previous movies, such as Robert Picardo, Paul Bartel and Don and Dan Stanton. Other great actors featured, of course. Special mention to John Glover as Daniel Clamp, who was originally written to be a lot more villainous, but they liked his childlike take on the character so much they made Daniel Clamp a more likeable character. Robert Prosky as Grandpa Fred, who was loosely based on Al Lewis. There was Kathleen Freeman as Microwave Marge, and of course Christopher Lee as Dr. Catheter. Apparently, the first thing Christopher Lee did was apologise to Joe Dante for appearing in Howling 2. Hulk Hogan also has a cameo in this movie of course. It's funny when I first watched this movie as I mentioned it was on VHS and I long wondered why Hulk Hogan's name was in the credits. It wasn't until years later when I happened to watch the film on TV that I realised that there were actually two versions of it. A theatrical cut which has Hulk Hogan in it and the home video release which features John Wayne. I had intended for this to be a green background, but I opted instead to add the iconic I Heart New York design. I added it in with a pencil first before painting it. And now we have Gizmo who I paint much like the previous four Mogwais. I establish the fur pattern and apply it in layers uh, using a photo reference that's just off camera. And then in order to make the fur look fluffy, I dry brush. Uh, that's applying small amounts of paint to the end of the brush and gently brushing the paint on. And then I go back and define the hairs with a pen. Who doesn't love a Mogwai? Despite all the high maintenance, we all want one. We're nearly there. Bop and bop. But there we go, uh, just need to add my signature. I hope you've enjoyed this little tribute to Gremlins 2 as much as I did. I hope it encourages you to go back and watch the movie again. The finished painting can be found on both my Instagram page and the Vidorama Facebook group. Let me know what you think of it in the comments or share your Gremlin memories. Thank you again for joining me today. Please don't forget to be kind, like and subscribe.